Okay. Uh, hey, Nate. What did I miss from the first part? Um, actually, you didn't miss a lot, actually. So... Okay. Um, we play as Maddie. She's, like, the manager for her best friend Tara's, uh, paranormal-themed YouTube channel. And they go on one last trip together before Maddie quits. And... Well, uh, there's this one girl, Morgan, who told them to come to this place, Eisenfeld. And <laughs> I'm really bad at recapping, but yeah. It seems so far that she's been making up her paranormal stories, but I'm not so sure about that. <laughs> That's a pretty good explanation, Sarah. Okay, let's... let's get back into it. How are you guys doing today? I only had two classes, but man... <laughs> am I pooped. Hey, Amber. Uh, we head to the appointed meeting spot, right at the turn of the hour. <clears throat> Even during the day, the forest felt hostile and foreign. Uh, but now at night, it's downright scary. Each rattle of a branch is a demon's footsteps, every gust of a wind is a monster's breath. I stand close to Tara, treading on the backs of her feet several times. I think this is supposed to be the place. God, I don't remember any voices. I look around the area. It's indistinguishable from the rest of the woods. My only comfort is a tiny pinprick of light that represents our cabin, back at the forest edge. A feeling of dread creeps its way up my spine. What if this is a trap or a setup? Maybe Morgan just lured us out here in the middle of nowhere and is waiting for... waiting out of sight with a knife in hand or something. Oof. Considering we traveled thousands of kilometers to get here, if this was a trick, we fell for it hard. Maybe we're early. I know that we're not. Tara sweeps the flashlight around, illuminating a few identical trees before the light's beams peters off into oblivion. Maybe we should just go back. The light passes over Morgan, suddenly a meter away from us. Creepy. Ah! Tara jolts backwards, crashing into me. The flashlight plummets to the ground, bouncing once before stopping it. What is her problem? <laughs> I keep my balance barely and catch Tara's arm to stop her from falling. Are you okay? Short term, yeah, but I think I just lost 10 years. What about you, Mads? I'm fine. What on earth were you doing? Me? I, I was waiting for you. Where? Didn't you hear us? Uh, just over there. Sorry, I had headphones in and missed you. Jinx! How are you doing today? Yo! You were just standing in the dark? In a forest? Wearing headphones? Yes. Why? At a loss for words, I can only shrug. Does hanging out alone in the dark? In the middle of nowhere not register as weird for Morgan? <laughs> you just spooked us as little is all. Wait, what? No worries. She stoops down and retrieves the flashlight from the snow, drying it on her sleeve. Uh, she brushes off the snow the same way she brushes off Morgan's actions. <laughs> anyway, it's all good. What now? Morgan turns and faces the trees, shining her flashlight across them. I thought we could walk around a little. It might help you to get a better feel for the area. Is it a little too loud? Music... Uh, just... Does that work? What the... 
Oh, <laughs> wrong slider. Behind Morgan's back, Tara and I exchange a look of concern. Tara gives me the slightest of shrugs. I'm still reluctant, but I nod. If Morgan's planning to kill us, it's not like it'll make a difference whether she does it here or in the forest. And I'm pretty sure she's not a murderer anyway. How do you know that? Sure, lead on. Morgan sets off without another word, and we follow just a couple of paces back. Are we going somewhere in particular? Not really. I doubt you want to go this far late at night, right? Right. That's fine. We'll stick to the edge then. As we walk, Morgan keeps her flashlight pointed straight ahead in the direction that we're going. Tara, on the other hand, swings hers around, looking up trees and out into the abyss. She and I only brought one flashlight with us, the spare is sitting in one of our suitcases back at the cabin. I regret leaving it behind just on the off chance that we somehow get separated. So, did you learn anything useful today? What, what did we do? Oh, and not really. We went around town some, but... But most people didn't really want to talk. Yeah. How'd you know? That's how it is around here. People are mistrustful. Are they now? <laughs> I was kind of surprised by that. Figured with how out of the way it is here that we might have been... I don't know. I mean, yeah, an isolated place. Maybe some warm welcome. Maybe some hospitality. I don't know. I don't really know this place. I don't know where it is. Somewhere in Europe? Treated like celebrities? Hey now, don't project. Uh, but something like that. It's more like they isolate themselves by choice. We have internet and TV. It's just that lots of people choose not to use them. Are they Amish? <laughs> I'm guessing they probably had some not so nice things to say about me too, right? Neither Tara nor I respond. Our silence lasts a bit too long. Let's make bets who's gonna die first? Oh my god. Uh, Tar would die. Tar would die in your mind? Maybe. Uh, it's okay, I'm used to it. You don't have to pretend or anything. Light shines in our faces as Morgan turns around, half smiling. Hey, you two don't need another assistant back where you live or anything, right? Uh... <laughs> uh, yeah. We do. My mouth flaps like a fish while I try to think of a diplomatic response. But then Morgan laughs and faces forward again. Wait, Morgan knows. Just kidding. Hmm? We trek on in awkward silence. I'm not sure what we're supposed to be doing or looking for. We're just wandering in the dark, trusting that Morgan knows how to get back to the cabin. It's cold and my feet are sore, uh, and I'm once again regretting coming to Eisenfeld. Dennis, how are you doing today? I'm glad you could join. Uh, I gently tug Tara's sleeve right by her elbow. When she looks at me, I silently gesture back towards where we came from and shrug, hoping she'll get the message. Now, she smiles back. I nod. She gives a worried look over towards Morgan, who is now slightly farther away. Tara holds up five fingers. Five more minutes. Are they gonna ditch her? Sighing, I nod again. We hurry to catch back up with Morgan. Is there something wrong? Oh no. <laughs> Maddie uh, had something in her shoe. Oh. It's hard to tell if she buys it. I wouldn't. Mentally, I'm counting backwards from five minutes, already imagining the comfort of my bed and blanket back at the cabin. How I'm going to survive a whole month of this is an issue for future me to worry about. I got lost out in this part of the forest once. Why would you say that? Three minutes and 20, 32 seconds. Three minutes and 31 seconds. Eh, don't worry, though. I know my way around now. 
Yeah, they, they mentioned something about that. I step on Tara's foot again, this time totally on purpose. I thought they might. Her tone is completely nonchalant. At least Morgan seems impossible to offend. It's too bad it looks like it's going to snow tonight. We probably shouldn't stay out too late. Thank God. Yeah, that's too bad. I'm sorry this was so disappointing. I hope that there will be more to see. Hmm. Uh, what exactly were you expecting? It's the middle of the night. Come on, Mads. It's about the atmosphere. It's way spookier out here when it's dark. I know. That's half the problem. We can turn back now if you'd like. Before I agree, Tara shakes her head. Nah, let's give it a couple more minutes. You came out all this way for us, after all. I glare at Tara, but I think she misses it. I've lost track of my countdown, too. Uh, whatever. The small, apologetic smile that I barely notice does little to assuage, assuage my discomfort. I forgot how to say that. Uh, Maddie with ghosts. Maddie's going to fall in love first. It seems that way. Because cause she's in love with the ghost. Eat the yellow snow. Flavor. Uh, we tra traipse aimlessly through the snow for a little while. Longer. I stare at my feet more than at the path ahead, and simply follow in the footsteps left behind by the other two. So I nearly slam into Tara, who's come into a complete halt yet again. What now? I saw something. You did? Tara, stop messing around, let's... No, I mean it, I saw something. I shut up. I can tell by her tone that she's serious. She saw something, or at least she thinks she did. Maybe an animal? The three of us turn and face the way she is. It's even deeper into the forest, barely lit by the moon. There's light. Is someone else walking around? There shouldn't be anyone out here in this time of night. It's dangerous to be in the woods once it gets late. Yeah, but we're walking through them. I opt not I opt to not point out the obvious hypocrisy. It was probably moonlight or something. It it wasn't the moon, Maddie. There's something out there. Both of them point their flashlights in the direction Tara's looking. Aside from more trees, there's nothing to be seen. Tara... Maddie... She grins. This is what we're here for, come on! Tara breaks into a run, leaving Morgan and I behind in surprise. We exchange a look before Morgan runs off after her. I have no choice but to go too. Oh boy. The regret is almost instant. Cold knives pierce my lungs with each heavy breath. I'm not in the best shape to begin with, and the snow and boots don't make any make things any easier. The only consolation is that we're running in a straight line, so it won't be hard to follow our path back. Every so often we pause to catch our breath. The pace is, ca pace is catching up to Tar too, who has to fight to keep her smile on. Morgan seems unfazed by it all. I'm about three seconds away from demanding that we give up when I see it. What? Way off in the distance, too far to identify the source, is a light. It sparkles and glimmers like a star that fell to earth. I fall silent, the words stolen from my mouth. Then to our points, stating what we already know. There it is! Buoyed by the second, her second wind, Tara runs off again. This time, Morgan and I are close behind. We follow the light, which sometimes blinks out, but soon reappears. 
I'm too focused on us slipping and falling to give much thought as to the source. There's no telling how long or how far we've been going. Somehow the light never seems to get any closer or farther away. What do you think it is? I bet the light has really nice hair. I don't know, guys. I think this light might actually be an anime girl. It's like it's running from us. Hey, wait up! Dara yells out into the darkness. If whatever it is can understand her, it ignores her. Running is quickly becoming difficult. My lungs burn out from the burn from the cold, and my breathing turns ragged after barely a minute. Dara pulls further and further ahead for Morgan and me, her one-track mind fixated on that light. After a bit longer, I hit my limit, and my pace slows back to a walk, then a stop. I fold over, hands on my knees, as I gasp for breath. Morgan crunches to a stop just ahead, too, turning back towards me. Are you alright? I try to respond, but... I'm breathing too heavily to be able to talk. I just wave my hand, gesturing for Morgan to go on ahead without me. But she doesn't. Are you sure? I force myself to stand and nod. I'm fine. In the murk, Tara's become a disembodied light herself. Only the flashlight's glow visible. I watch it bounce to a halt and then slowly make its way back towards us. You guys give it too easily. How are you not dead? I haven't seen you run in years. That's because you never hit the gym with me. I don't know if she's joking or not, and I'm too worn out to care. So, what was that thing? Do you think it was your forest spirit? Morgan's eyes widen. You believe me? Tara shrugs. I'm considering it, at least. I mean, what else could have it been? Because it could, could have... Fairies. Fairies. Holy shit, it's Faye. Morgan says it very nonchalantly. I side-eyed Tar, who's very interested in her boots. The forest spirit doesn't really make a light like that. At least, not that I'm aware of. Uh, right, that makes sense. Fairies, eh? There's always like a little fairy doing like a ballerina twirl. Doesn't it, Mads? It was probably someone from the village. What? But, as I said, I know how unlikely that is. The way the light seemed to always maintain a precise distance was unnatural. I can feel the seeds of doubt being sown in my heart. Uh, why is Maddie the only one wearing a big coat? Cuz... <sighs> Cuz, come on, you... You can't just cover up <laughs> these characters. Uh, but it was definitely strange. Tara looks at me with more pride than a rainbow flag. Hey, holy shit, that's practically canon in Maddie terms. I roll my eyes, but it's partially for show. I'm curious, at the very least. I wouldn't call myself a believer as much as Tara wishes. I mean, if this were real, <laughs> they'd be freezing to death right now. I mean, look how cold it looks. But that's two strange things so far. Which is two more expected than when I boarded the train out here? was strange. That's as much as I'll get. A yawn overtakes me in the middle of speaking. It doesn't help the pain in my lungs. Oh, I uh, guess it's past your bedtime, huh? I kick some snow at her and it bounces usefully off of her pants. With the way we've been bantering with each other, it really does feel a bit more like old times. Make that three strange things on this trip so far. Uh, 
We should be heading back anyway. We can't go much further in before I'd be lost too. You still know where we are? Yes, of course. We'd be in trouble if not. She has a point. I got up so uh, I got so caught up chasing the light that I lost track of what direction we'd come from. I'll show you around more tomorrow. There's something you might like to see. Yeah, what is it? A surprise. We'll go tomorrow before it gets dark. It's a bit of a walk. Does it have, any, uh, have to do with whatever that light was? I have no idea. It's possible. Story of my life. Okay, well, we'll call it quits for tonight and pick back up tomorrow. Yeah, I guess. That's fine by me. Great. She hops forward and then pauses. Uh, guess you ought to lead the way. Morgan smiles as she do just, does just that. So another night with no spirits. Hmm. I mean, that's pretty promising, though. I don't know. I don't think there's any natural phenomena like that. It takes us only 15 minutes or so to reach the cabin. We must have added a lot of time to our trip with all the wondering we did. Morgan bids us farewell at the door, which I barely return before stumbling inside. I'm halfway out of my boots by the time Tar's inside. Guess you're not staying up late, then. I'm out like a light the second I hit the bed. Tar grins, just briefly. <laughs> right. My hand is on the doorknob when Tar clears her throat. Hey, thanks for, you know, chasing after that thing. I appreciate you playing along. My hand lingers on the door, poised to turn. Yeah, of course. Let's see what we can find tomorrow. Right, yeah. Right, good night. Night. I quickly step in and then shut my bedroom door before Tara can say anything else. As I switch off the lights and crawl into bed, I remember the end of the train ride here. I felt the same just now, standing there not knowing what to say. It would be so easy. I banish those thoughts from my mind and wrench my eyes shut. <sighs> There'll be time to worry about it tomorrow. I have time to think. We have a month. Dylan. Hey, what's up, dude? How you doing today? As I slowly drift off to sleep, the, exha the, the exhaustion that I feel winning out over the stress... The last thoughts I have are of dancing lights in the snow. We start to fall into a bit of a, a routine. Every day, Tara and I will get up and explore Eisenfeld or the surrounding area a bit. We never go too far into the forest, but just enough for, to set up some dramatic camera angles or to film, uh, film some monologue segments for Tara. Once Morgan's done with work, she'll join us or sh show us around. Sometimes she brings her cat with her. Surprise, surprise, it still hasn't said a word. She keeps promising it eventually will, though. Ever since the night we saw the light in the trees, we've hoped to encounter something equally mysterious or interesting. No such luck, though. Any sort of hope or excitement that I had... Any bit of belief that I'd allowed myself to build up has been squashed back down to resigned indifference. My trademark, I know. It took about a week of this before Morgan asked us to wait for her at the cabin, saying she was finally ready to show us that thing she mentioned. <laughs> she still wasn't getting uh, any more forthcoming with what it was, but over the week we'd known Morgan, I'd gotten a little more comfortable with the idea. If she was going to leave us in a shallow grave or something, she had plenty of opportunities to do that already. The heavy clouds of her head promise a darker night than the past few, and probably heavier snowfall. We won't be able to stay out very late. Okay, I will be right back. 
gonna take a little break. Okay, it's always good to take a break before the good stuff starts happening. <sighs> they all are weird. Everyone's weird. What are you talking about? That was a good attempt at arson, Ember. Even with Morgan's guidance, the possibility of being caught in a snowstorm is hard to ignore. Tara paces back and forth outside as I linger in the doorway, trying to enjoy the warmth from the cabin for as long as I can. Finally, a fashionable 15 minutes late, I spot Morgan heading down the trail from the village towards us. Tara zips off to intercept her, and the two of them approach together. Oh shit, 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 <laughs> thanks, oh my gosh, uh, 
<clears throat> you didn't miss anything though, so that's good. Uh, hey, sorry I'm late. Work was a little busy tonight. Busy? <laughs> uh, no worries. Well, that answers one of the myths of Eisenfeld that I was curious about. Whether or not anyone actually, uh, ever shops at Morgan's store. Tara bounces around between the two of us, raring to get along. Morgan smiles approvingly at her. So... You said you had something special planned for tonight, right? She spent the whole day trying to guess what it is. I think I've narrowed it down. It's either a crashed UFO, the Fountain of Youth, or Elvis. Those are the ones you narrowed it down to? Someday, Mads, it's gonna be Elvis, and you're gonna wish you'd believe me. I faced Morgan, pointedly turning my back to Tara. Anyway, we're ready to go if you are. Do you both have flashlights? We're going to be heading a bit deeper into the woods this time. I thought she didn't know the woods past that point. Okay. Uh, we both hold up our lights in unison. After our first venture into the forest together, there's no way I'm ever going out there without each of us having a flashlight. Just having one makes me feel more self-reliant. It helps suppress my anxiety a little bit. Just a little. Great, follow me. We circle back around the cabin and head into the woods. I've been waiting to show you two this since you got here. You're going to love it. Tara starts to vibrate again, clearly soaking up the suspense. As much as I hate to admit it, she's got me pretty curious too. I'm not sure what she could be keeping secret out here, and for so long. This isn't going to be dangerous or anything, right? Uh, probably not. I like those odds. <laughs> uh, we set off at a fairly brisk pace. Tara makes a, a point to walk right by Morgan's side, taking short and hurried strides. If she doesn't find out where we're going soon, I'm pretty sure she might actually explode. Okay, I'm gonna keep guessing. Ancient graveyard, fairy circle, satanic ritual. Sasquatch Den? Uh, close. It's a church. A church? Tara stops dead in her tracks. Wait. A church? Was Maddie right when he, she said you were going to try to get us to join a cult? Tara! I never said that. I might have said that. <laughs> God damn it. Despite our antics, Morgan never stops or slows down. <laughs> Nothing like that. I promise. It's really old. Older than any of the buildings you've ever seen in Eisenfeld. The people who built it are ancestors of the residents today. I guess they were what you called consider pagans. They worshipped a god of the forest. Whoa. I expect more to the story, but... That seems to be Morgan's stopping point for now. She focuses on the path instead, swinging her lantern around in an arc as she looks for whatever it is that's telling her where to go. Every single tree around me looks identical, but I guess one of them is a little more special than the rest. When she sees whichever one that is, she leads. she starts to lead us on again. Interesting method. Uh, my glasses start fogging up a bit more as we walk. I should have insisted that Tara lay her up a bit more. I'd be a pretty crappy friend if I let her freeze to death out here. So, to summarize, your great great whatevers and the rest of the villagers built an old church out in the forest to worship a giant forest spirit? And that's what we're going to see right now? Right. Have I mentioned that this is going to be the best episode of the show ever? Morgan's got Tara hanging on to her every word. Hook, line, and sinker. I'm glad she's having a good time at least. No thanks to me. 
You said it's older than the rest of the village. Do you know about how old? Centuries, at least. I don't know how many. I've done some research on the history of Eisenfeld, but none of the books really mention it. How'd you learn about it, then? A lot of it comes from old journals, or other documents left behind by the people who used to live here. Parts of it are passed down as family legends, too. Hmm. The image of Evelyn and Morgan sitting cozily by a fire while Evelyn tells stories is one that I can't actually imagine happened. I'm not going to pry into the details of that, though. You think we could take a look at those journals sometime? Maybe we'd show them off in the show. Ooh. Authentic first-hand accounts or something like that. For some reason, now Morgan stops, looking ponderous. I also realize that it's starting to snow. Just barely, but enough to make me bite my lip and watch the sky. I'd be happy to show you. Score! You're seriously the best. Th like, thanks for doing all this. It's nothing, really. Don't all your hosts do the same? A lot of them only stick around for the first day or two. Then they realize there's a lot of filming and setting up behind the scenes. They get bored. For all her issues, I can't deny that Morgan's been a much more gracious and helpful host than we're used to. We walk in silence for a little bit. All the while, the snow continues to fall, getting heavier and heavier. At first, I try to ignore it, but it's hard. Like always, it seems that it'll fall to me to be the responsible one. Hey, Morgan? Are you sure it's safe to keep going? It's starting to snow pretty hard. Both of them look up as if they haven't noticed. Oh, you're right. Hmm. Now it's Morgan who turns around and looks back the way we came. I can practically hear the gears turning in her head. Tara watches, looking anxious. Oh, so she only worries if Morgan starts to look uncomfortable. It's going to get pretty bad soon. Uh, she says it so matter-of-factly that uh, at the first the severity of her words don't register. Then every single alarm bell in my head starts ringing. What? How soon is pretty soon, and how bad? I'd say within the next half hour. Those clouds don't look good. Uh-oh. That's an understatement. They seem to be moving almost impossibly fast. Just like that, the weather has gone from a light snow to the start of a blizzard. We need to turn back, then back to the cabin. I take a couple steps, but the fresh snow has made it harder to walk. Even the trail that we just left was uh, has been partially obscured. We're closer to the church than the cabin. I think we should go there and wait it out. Uh, that's probably a better idea. Wait it out? What if it just... What if it doesn't just pass by? What if we're stuck there for days? It's better than being dead, you know. I turn to him in disbelief. No shit it is. Morgan wrings her hands, looking genuinely distressed. I don't know what's going on. I don't think it was... Once again, she looks back in the direction we came from, lost in thought. I don't know, maybe you could... Drink the snow. Eat the snow. Dennis, you're right. <laughs> For once. Uh, we're just wasting time standing here arguing, you know. Morgan says said we should go to the church, and she's the expert. I'm loath to call her an expert at this point, but Tar's right that we don't have time to spare. We're definitely in the d dire straits if she's the one being the voice of reason. Fine, let's get going then. We don't waste any more energy on talking. We just follow Morgan as closely as we can. The light from her bounces in the wind, reminiscent of the light we just uh, we followed just sure just a few short days ago. Okay, let me. It's actually too quiet now. Maybe that's better. 
I focus on it, using it as a beacon, since it's easier to keep track of than Morgan herself. I bury my face into my scarf as much as I can, feeling the wind push against me and making it harder to walk. But by now the world around us is starting to grow more and more blurry. It will be a whiteout before long. My heart beats and hard in my chest as my anxiety starts to skyrocket. We keep walking, huddling closer together as we press on. Tara keeps a brave face, but she's shuddering more with each step. Morgan and I push a little closer to her, hoping to help shield her from the wind as much as we can. Oh, those clothes are not going to help you at all. Jesus Christ. When we get back, if we get back, I'm not letting her take another step outside until she agrees to start wearing something warmer. After what feels like years, we come to a stop. My legs are leaden with the effort of marching through the snow. I'm afraid that Morgan's going to say that we're lost, but then I realize that we've arrived. Just ahead, a huge stone building stands tall. For its supposed age, it looks remarkably intact. The howling winds buffet it, but even from here it looks infinitely safer than being stuck out here. A pair of massive wooden doors loom before us. Just give me a sec, one second, I'll get this open. She grabs a hold of the door and starts to pull. The freezing wind works against her, and for a tense moment, I worry that she won't be able to get them open. But then, with a creak that's audible even in this weather, they slide open to let us in. After you. We don't need telling twice. Tara and I hurry inside with Morgan letting the door slam shut behind her as she follows. first thing that strikes me is the temperature. An old stone building in the middle of a blizzard should be frigid, but it's not. In fact, it's almost warm. Wow, that was, that is bigger than I thought it was. This is pretty nice, actually. Everything's intact. I thought it was going to be, like, ruined. Well, I say everything. I mean the bookcases. Matt, we hit the jackpot! Her shout reverberates around the massive chamber, leaving a faint echo in its wake. When Morgan said a church, I figured it would be some small wooden shack with a tacked on steeple, but this... Yeah, that's what I thought too. My thoughts exactly. Tara's flashlight beam dances wildly along the walls as she spins in circles, trying to take in every last detail all at once. This is nothing short of incredible. I let my life drift as I let my light drift as well, but slowly enough that I can actually take the time to process what I'm seeing. The whole interior is remarkably well preserved: a few broken pews, a couple pieces of collapsed stone, and a layer of dust on nearly every surface are the only things that make the place seem anything less than brand new. Looking closer at the building itself, I can see various flourishes or designs decorating the walls and railings. Whoever built this place, they built it as a labor of love. The centerpiece is a massive stained glass window that dominates the center of the far wall. Its brilliant colors form an intricate pattern. I make my way over to Morgan, who's currently watching Tara dart around the building with a small, satisfied smile. It dissipates as I approach. Even though I'm relieved to be out of the storm, I can't believe we ended up in this situation in the first place. Before I can say anything, though, she beats me to it. I'm really sorry about this. I truly am. If I thought the weather would turn out so foul, I'd have never suggested we come out here. The last thing I want to do is place you and Tara in any danger. I just wanted to show the two of you something tangible, something different. I swallow my harsh words. Chastising her wouldn't do us any good. Plus, she's right that the weather changed way faster than I would have expected, or even thought possible, almost supernaturally. So, I just rub my shoulders, trying to massage some warmth back into them. Don't apologize yet. There's still plenty of time for us to die of starvation or something like that. I think it's more likely that we die of exposure first. 
Well, that's reassuring. Suddenly, a beam of light swipes across my face. It comes from Tara on the other side of the building. Hey, come out, come check out these bugs. Morgan and I both start to head over. Uh, by the way, how do you keep it so warm in here? I was looking for a heater or something, but couldn't find one. It's magic, I think. What? You know what? I'm not even gonna argue. Tara's waiting excitedly next to a stack of books. That's probably a first. <laughs> Check it out! Ooh. Uh, the wooden shelves are warped and damaged beyond repair, but have still retained their shape pretty well. The books that line them are in a similar condi condition. Uh, when I remove one, its once soft cover is cold and rigid, and the text had faded into the legibility. But flipping through the pages, a few of them are readable. Or at least it would be if I could understand the language. <clears throat> Excuse me. Your light went out. Ghost. Spooky. You might have a cat ghost. How do you know? <laughs> Tell me these aren't filled with ancient incantations or something. <laughs> these aren't filled with ancient incantations. She holds up a book to her face and blows a puff of air towards me, filling my face with dust. I wrinkle my nose, coughing and spluttering. Ugh. Hey, what the hell? You don't know what's floating around in here. <laughs> You're literally the only person alive who could be in a haunted church and not care at all. She never said it was haunted, you know. And I'm sorry I'm a, uh, still a bit too shaken up over, you know, almost dying in a snowstorm. Psh, we weren't even, uh, we were never in real danger, I'm sure. Isn't that right, Morgan? Actually, I wasn't sure we were going to make it here. <laughs> Tara's eyes widen, the reality of the situation hitting her at last. Then, she grins. That makes this an even more badass story for the vlog. Mads, you'll have to go hard on the wind sound effects. Uh, maybe we should set the camera outside, get some footage of the blizzard? <laughs> you crazy. She hurries over to where I'd abandoned the camera on one of the pews and picks it up, dancing as she, dancing around as she frames mock shots. I open my mouth to tell her how dumb that is when a trickle of dust spirals past me. What? The whole church shakes with a slight tremor and more dust is displaced. Er earthquake? That would be the icing on this cake. It would also be horrifying if Horf horrifically, horrifying, horrifically ironic if we survive the blizzard only to die in a freak earthquake. Something tells me that's not what this is, though. What the fuck? There's another tremor, slightly stronger this time, and with it a distant boom, like someone shooting a cannon in the forest. Is this place gonna collapse? The three of us exchange a glance silently. For once, even Tara is silent. Boom. The stained glass window rattles. I hear Morgan suck in a breath. When I look at her, her eyes are wild and confused. Boom. The thunderous sound is getting closer. Then there's another sound, a blistering crack, that I recognize as a tree splintering. 
No winds, no matter how strong, should be able to do that. Holy shit. Is it the forest spirit? Wordlessly, Tara heads over to the front doors, though my first instinct is to call her back to what I hope is safety. I find myself more curious than afraid. I have to know what it is. I have to see it. Morgan lingers behind us, unsure of what to say or do. Tara reaches the doors and presses her shoulder against it. She pushes the door open just a crack, or at least she tries to. But the terrifying wind catches and rips the door all the way open as if presenting the scene before us. I struggle to comprehend what I'm seeing. Tall, taller even than the trees, stands what I can only describe as a monster. Holy f- Oh, god damn. Two enormous, luminous red eyes peer out across the black expanse of the night sky. Neither the howling wind nor the biting snow seems to affect it at all. Holy moly. Oh my god. That's... That's not possible. This can't be happening. This can't be real. My legs are about to collapse under me. My heart drops like a rock in my chest, and every heartbeat sends a rush of blood through my body so strong it drowns out the cacophonous storm. Tara fumbles with the camera, her hands shaking violently, cursing, trembling. She struggles to lift up to her face, repeatedly losing her grip as she tries to focus on the thing in front of us. I don't know how she can even have a presence of a mind to do that. My thoughts are a blur as my mind does its best to process what I'm seeing. It's like the forest itself come to life, like a whole mass of trees just uprooted themselves from the ground to form something that can't possibly exist. Branches twist and contort into each other. One tree splits into ten. Wood, rotting into decay and growing anew again, spin from the impossible red center. Two immense horns pierce the sky, looking like lightning bolts permanently imprinted against the clouds. <sighs> Sadly not an anime girl? Sadly! I don't think so. Every thought that I can manage to form is fleeting. Every rational part of me tells me that what I'm seeing shouldn't exist, that it isn't possible. Yet here it is, undeniable. All I can do is stare. The red glows brightly, burning my eyes, like it's staring right back at me. Maybe it is. The beast shuffles forward, its feet obscured by the force below. With each movement, there's another massive echo. Trees crackle and snap beneath its immense weight like tray, like twigs. Thanks. Uh, flattened to nothing and buried under the snowfall. What? Did you get that, Tara? <laughs> That's one million views right there. Slowly, the beast lumbers off into the night and is swallowed from the sight by the darkness. Soon, even the sounds of its footsteps fade, too. I'm not sure how long Tara and I remain in petrified silence. I realize that I've fallen to my knees, though I have no recollection of it happening. I feel like I have no recollection of anything, that nothing will ever make sense again. At some point, Morgan comes to my side, helping Tara and I back indoors. My whole body is numb with either shock or the cold, perhaps both. She leads us to one of the benches that's mostly intact. I collapse down onto it, my legs still unwilling to support me. I glance at Tara. All the color is gone from her face, and she's still trembling. I probably don't look much better. I think that would freak me up for sure. For a long time, none of us know what to say. We sit and wait, 
and wait until long after the snow has stopped falling and morning arrives. Chapter 2 Okay. Oh, man. Okay, I didn't actually see that coming. But, yeah, there's a giant forest spirit. <laughs> it looks like the, you know, the Nightwalker? What was it, Princess Mononoke? Kind of. But standing. That is... Pretty cool though. I hope we get I hope we get a glimpse of it like up close or something. Man. Uh you're gonna name it Dave or Kevin. Okay. That that's fitting. Uh. Dave, Devin, okay, it's a good compromise. I don't say a word on the way back to the cabin. How can I? How do you vocalize the knowledge that your core understanding of the world just turned out to be wrong? It feels like the ground beneath my feet dropped out from under me. My steps are unsteady, and I feel nausea come up like waves. My head pounds. Hard. I've always prided myself on my healthy skepticism, but I can't deny what's right in front of me. My thoughts scramble to find some way to explain it, some way that I can pierce it together, piece it together, in a way I can understand. But it's hopeless. Tara is still struck mute, I'd expect her to be bouncing off the walls, to be unable to calm down. After all, this is what she's been after for years. Ever since we started the show, ever since she first had the idea for the show. Either she didn't believe in the first place, or like she's just in shock. Like, actually in shock. Now that we finally, actually found something, neither of us know how to react. She keeps playing the short clips she recorded over and over again, watching it until the battery runs dry. A lot of it is unusable due to the snow and her shaking hands, but there are still a few seconds of clear, uninterrupted footage. Her ratings are going to go off the charts. We're going to have to prepare for endless barrages of questions and accusations of doctoring the footage. Yeah. This will mean interviews, national news, and maybe even a book deal. Nothing will ever be the same again. But all we can manage is silence. Morgan's the only one who seems somewhat calm, though even she's a bit shaken. She's the one who coaxes us to leave the church and start heading back to town. What are the logistics of that? Like, if you start publicizing it, it's gonna be not a forest secret anymore. People are gonna want to go there and see it for themselves. Uh, doesn't sound like a good idea. <laughs> Maybe if you kept it secret. I don't know. It's the obvious thing to do. Yet somehow the suggestion sounds like a crazy idea that I would have never come up with myself. All my thoughts are mush. If it weren't for Morgan, I'm sure Tara and I would both end up wandering the woods in total shock. I don't... Is this the first time Morgan's seen it? Surely not, right? I can barely manage a slow stumble as I follow from way behind. A thick, fresh snow and pizza path. The blizzard subsided, but the harsh winds bite at my exposed skin. It all feels like too much. Maddie, are you okay? It takes me a few seconds to even register her voice, and a few more to realize she's looking back at me with genuine concern. Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. 
My brain screams to ask for help, and my body feels moments away from collapsing. But what kind of help could she give me? I can only focus on reaching our destination. Morgan looks like she wants to respond, but instead resumes her trek forward, this time moving at a somewhat slower pace. After a while, the faintest light in the distance comes into view. The cabin. Our light. Our refuge in the darkness. Tara's pace quickens to a near sprint, like she had been waiting for this moment. She rushes and crosses the distance, disappearing inside. Morgan walks alongside me. She opens the door, following inside behind me. I feel a sudden pang of guilt over how much I've disregarded her before now. Especially since she was actually right. Well, I mean, how often is it you're gonna actually see forest spirits? As soon as I reach the couch, my legs give out from under me and I fall onto it like a ton of bricks. It isn't until I hit the cushions that I realize that I, I nearly crushed Tara, who has already collapsed next to me. Sorry. She doesn't say anything. She might not have noticed. Oh man. I thought that getting back to the cabin in safety would renew her enthusiasm. She should be running circles around me, screaming, I told you so. Everything about her whole existence had just been validated. But she's just looking down at the ground without saying a word. Her bangs obscure her eyes, making her face unreadable. Her chest rises and falls in an odd rhythm. Then I realize that, just like me, she's still trembling. The monster's silhouette flashes through my head again, huge and terrifying, the red light shining down to the very center of my being. Here, this will help. She sets down two glasses of water on the table down in front of us. I didn't even register her coming over here. Tara clears her throat and leans forward. Thanks. Seriously. They're the first words that she's spoken in what feels like hours. She manages a small sip, but most of it dribbles down her shirt. Gosh. I don't even really reach for my glass, knowing that my hands are just as shaky, if not more. My entire worldview has shattered. It's going to take more than just a walk in the snow and a glass of tap water for everything to sink in. How are you not freaking out? Have you... Have you seen that thing before? No, that was my first time as well. Oh. She doesn't answer the other part of my question. Tara continues to slowly drink her glass of water while mine remains untouched. At some point, Morgan goes into the kitchen and prepares a pot of coffee. I can hear a rummage around in the fridge and smell the coffee as it brews, but neither register beyond a cursory awareness. What does get my attention is when she sets two steaming mugs down in front of us. Hot coffee sloshing over onto her hands. Drink this. It'll help. I do as I'm told, lapping at the brew since it's too hot to sip. Dara does the same. Morgan sits beside her on the couch, draining her own mug much faster than we do as she gazes out the window. By the time I'm about halfway through my own, I do feel a bit better. Whether that's because of the warmth, the caffeine, or just the placebo effect, I'm not sure. I'm telling you, sir, Morgan's a witch. Once we're finished, we just lapse back into preoccupied silence. Yet again, it's Morgan who breaks it. I think the two of you should take some time to relax. I need to get home soon, too, before I arouse too much suspicion. Does that work for you? I look to Tara, who doesn't seem to have even heard what Morgan said. It, yeah, it sounds fine. The more that I think about it, the more appealing it sounds. Right now, I want nothing more than to curl up in my bed, cocoon myself in blankets, and sleep for a while. You... You just drank coffee. 
How are you gonna sleep? Okay, I'll see you later then. Never one for long goodbyes, Morgan heads straight for the door. I'll message you soon, it's okay, you can just tap on my window. She leaves before either of us can respond. We sit, and sit. I don't know for how long. Longer than I've ever seen Tara sit still. I just don't know what else to do. As much as I'd like to, I know we can't sit here forever. The knowledge that we'll soon have to return to mundane, everyday things feels unreal. We just witnessed something magical and life-changing. How could we just go back to normal life? But I know that, in truth, the world hasn't changed at all. Just our knowledge of it. Knowledge of it. No matter how long we wait, the outside world will continue to pass us by. It feels like an eternity passes, but Tara's voice breaks through the silence. I'm not sure if I fell asleep or not, but I react with a start and my heart beats 100 miles per hour. So, what do you think? About which part? There's a lot to take in. Yeah. About all of it, or any of it. While she sits, she idly put, pulls on a loose thread from a blanket close by. She pulls and pulls, and it unravels even further. I don't think she notices she's doing it. I, I think the main thing is that I wonder what else is out there now. Not just in the forest, but in the whole world. Are there more of those things? Or is it the only one of its kind? And... How did no one ever see it before? There's just so much that I don't know or what to feel. What about you? Again, she shrugs. The same, pretty much. There's nowhere you're gonna go, gonna get that boo tube ward now, you know. Boo tube? <laughs> it's a surefire joke. Oh, boo tube. Of course. Haha. <laughs> Uh, it should be an easy smile, but she doesn't react at all. Probably not. I think I'm gonna crash. Good night, Matt. Just like Morgan, she gets up and leaves without even giving me time to reply. There's barely five seconds between her saying it, and her bedroom door is slamming shut behind her. It's not at all the kind of response I'd uh, expect from Tara. Well, well, should save anyway. <laughs> uh, but these are far from normal circumstances. All that I can do now is wait. For her or for Morgan. Wait and wonder. Hold up. <laughs> Have you not unpacked yet? What is going on here? Uh, maybe it's empty. Of course. Uh, after a late night spent researching, I awaken around 11 in the morning, a good two or three hours later than I usually get up. I get dressed in a hurry, not wanting to keep Tara waiting before we head into town. It would be a pretty ironic twist though, since usually I'm the one who has to wait for her to get ready after late nights. I have a sheaf of notes that I took, and a hand cramp to match. I'm not sure how useful all of it will be, but it's at least a starting point. Tara's good at seeing the hidden connections and putting pieces together, too. It makes for entertaining videos, even without results. <laughs> like, uh... FDR's cousin is Sasquatch. Out in the living room, a lukewarm pot of coffee and a used mug are the only indications that she's awake. Hey, I'm up now. Slept in a little, but I'll be ready to go in a sec. I call out from the kitchen preparing my own cup of coffee. She doesn't respond. I wonder if she can't hear me with the door closed. I go and knock on the door, being careful not to spill any coffee on myself. No response. Oh, sh shice. I knock again louder. Most likely she has her headphones in... That or she fell back asleep. Y you ready? I'm good to go. I have a bunch of notes and research too. 
Maybe we can go over some of it with Morgan. Silence. She's not that heavy of a sleeper. I knock again even harder, but she still doesn't answer. I jiggle the doorknob a little bit. It turns easily. I open the door slowly, giving ample time to yell and interrupt me. But she doesn't. Her room is empty. She left without me. I let go of my carefully arranged papers, suddenly not really caring that much about them as they flutter to the floor. My hand shakes hard enough for coffee to spill out of the mug and staining the pages below. So that's how it is. Whatever it is. Wait, her suitcase is in here. Wait, what? What? Was her suitcase usually in here? <laughs> oh god, Tara, what have you done? I swallow the lump in my throat, forcing myself to not overreact. Maybe she tried to wake me up and I slept through it. Or maybe she just went out for a walk and will be out be back soon. So that we can go into town. There are a hundred different benign scenarios for what could have happened, but in my heart I know that she ditched me. Plain and simple. Oh, fuck. I go to the sink and dump out the coffee, my appetite suddenly gone. Then I pick up the papers that I dropped. A few of them are ruined beyond legibility with, from the coffee, but it's not like anyone will miss them. I throw them in the trash, along with the sodden paper towels that I use to clean up the spill. I just gather the rest of the papers into a pile to leave on the kitchen counter. Throwing them away feels like a waste, but I don't really want to look at them right now. What? Just a few days ago, Maddie was thinking about doing the same thing. I... <laughs> Fuck. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> I retreat back to my room and slam the door, even though there's no one around to hear it. I put on a film at random, for background noise more than anything. My thoughts start to wander before the opening credits are even finished. What exactly was it that I did to upset Tara so much? Before Morgan took us on uh, to the church, things were fine between us. If not a bit tense. But I was working on my attitude and she didn't seem bothered. I don't think you were the problem here. <laughs> I think what happened is Tara... I don't know, she... Her mind is in pieces now, I guess. And since seeing the monster, both of us have said so little. So I'm just one left wondering what I did wrong. I wish that she would talk to me and at least help me understand. As she went for the light thing in the woods. Maybe. I don't know what she's going to do with all her stuff, though. It's about 15 minutes into the film before I realize that I have the French audio track playing without subtitles and that I haven't understood a word of it. I close my laptop and stare blankly at the wall, since that's the only thing I can do and not mess up right now. It isn't long before I can hear the crunching of two pairs of footsteps outside, as well as the low murmur of conversation. Tara? The front door burst open and from my room I hear the din of Tara entering. Okay. Jesus. It scared me. Gotta be related to the stuff in the journals. There's no way they're not talking about the same thing. Just send all those pics to my email address when you can. This is gonna be so freaking good. Sure thing. I sit paralyzed in my bed. Should I ignore them? Go out and act like nothing's out of the ordinary? Oh, uh, wait. I mean, if she just left early... Wait, what? Well, what is Maddie upset about then? <sighs> Part of me just wants to hide in my room, but the way Tara and I have always gotten over our arguments is by being open about her issues. Plus, Tara would know that I'm at the cabin, so if she brought Morgan back here, I doubt she's trying to avoid me. 
Um, maybe they came back specifically to include me. Hoping for the best, I head out into the living room. Tara's brewing a pot of coffee while Morgan leans against the counter. A few books that she must have brought from home are stacked beside her. She glances up as I enter. Hey, Maddie. Uh, hey there. Tara nods without facing me. Hmm. What, uh, what are the books? I nod at the stack. Tara sets two cups of coffee in front of her and Morgan, and slides the books towards herself. They're the journals she mentioned the walk to church. She was letting me take a, a look at them. She puts emphasis on the word me, like she's the only one who's allowed to. Maybe that's the case. This isn't off to a great start. Why is she upset? Maybe because we never believed her? I see you picked up a coffee habit too, huh? Morgan's really rubbed off on you. Yeah. She turns to face Morgan, being sure to exclude me from what she says. What is going on? Okay, we can chill in my room. Might want to grab one of those spare chairs from out here. Oh, okay. It's small consolation, but I can tell that even Morgan feels a bit, uh, uncomfortable. Feels a uncomfortable? Feels a bit uncomfortable with the situation. She gives me a sympathetic look, but doesn't say anything. Just, why is Tara acting like this? If she would just tell me, we could work it out. I stick out an arm, halting Morgan as she carries the chair across the cabin. Tara, can, can I talk to you for a sec? The two of them exchange a look, but I can't tell what it's supposed to mean. Then she shrugs. I just her towards my room, and she follows me in. I shut the door. Can you please, like, tell me why you're mad at me? I'm not mad at you. I scoff. Whatever you want to call it, why are you treating me like this? Like what? I can always, uh, I can already feel myself starting to get angry, but I try to keep it under control. Please don't play dumb like that. You barely talked to me for three days. You ditched me this morning, and now you're going out of the way to exclude me. I don't know how to interpret that as anything other than mad. I have no idea what I said or did to piss you off, so I don't even know what to apologize for. Tara runs a hand through her hair and looks around my room. It's the first time she's been in here since we arrived in Eisenfeld. It's more or less a carbon copy of hers, so I don't know what's so interesting about it. I'm not mad. I'm just not wasting your time with this stuff anymore. I can take it from here. I'm not quite sure I heard her right. Sorry, what? I said I can take it from here. Take what exactly? The vid. <laughs> I mean, you're quitting anyway, so... I've got to learn how to do this all on my own, right? But that's not... I don't even know what to say to that. Why not ask me at least, or even tell me? That's so screwed up. How do you figure? Every day since we got here, you talked about, or at least shown how you don't want to be here. You even said it yourself. You have to make an effort to be less bitchy whenever we go out. So now that there's a solid lead, I can figure out the rest of it myself. Or at least with Morgan's help. If you want, I can buy you an early train ticket home or something. The next one should be coming through in a day or two. You don't have to keep pretending to care. The whole time, her tone never changes. It's flat and emotionless. I wonder if that's another result of Morgan's influence. I wait, expecting there to be more hoping that there's more. There isn't. I stand there dumbfounded. Tara shrugs again and then leaves, closing my bedroom door behind her. Okay, sorry about that. Let's get those journals. I can still hear her talking to Morgan through the wall, bright and chipper. My legs feel weak all of a sudden. 
and I collapsed onto my bed. Through everything, my own misgivings and concerns about my future, choosing to quit the show and telling Tar about it, and even witnessing the monster at the church, I've managed to keep my composure. But for the first time in I don't know how long, I can't stop it any longer. I cry. All of this feels so unfair. Of course I didn't want to be here. It, it, it's been a waste of time every single other time. I get it. I was the skeptic, the non-believer, only humoring her in all her exploits and playing as her foil. I ran on her parade constantly. And now, after everything that's happened, she was right. I can't deny that, but why does that mean I don't deserve to be involved with it now? Maybe she took my leaving personally, even though I swore that wasn't the case. I was only doing what was right for me. I needed to move on and do something with my life. So it, is it really my fault that I had meant... I meant uh, that meant I had to stop playing around the paranormal stuff? After all these... Uh, after these past couple days, I was even starting to reconsider that. And maybe staying on the show wouldn't be so bad. Once the episode goes live, everything will be changing. But now, I don't feel like that's an option. Like she'd even want me there anymore. I feel like everything in my life has changed in just a few short days. Like I'm lost at sea without anything to hold on to. My best friend in the whole world is at the epicenter of it all. And I'm thousands of miles from home. Through the walls, I can faintly hear the sound of Morgan and Tara discussing whatever it is. Not nearly loud enough for me to make out any words, but enough to be reminded of my exclusion. I wonder if Tara knows how upset I am, or if she expected me to be grateful. Neither would surprise me. I cry until my eyes are dry and sore, but I don't feel any better. The walls of my bedroom feel claustrophobic, and the vague sound of Tara talking is insufferable. I hurriedly bundle up and slip out of my bedroom and out the cabin to get some fresh air. The cold is just barely more manageable today, but it's still preferable to the atmosphere inside. It stings my wet cheeks, burning reminders of my unhappiness. That... That is so shitty. That is so shitty, Tara. Like... Uh, you kind of like drag her on this one month trip. You know, I think Tara's just... I think... She... Sees like... <laughs> she's expecting to be famous. And now... Uh, she pushes her own best friend away. Even though... They're fucking best friends. Uh, I don't know. I hate Tara now. Uh, I pick a direction at random and start hating it. Hating? <laughs> start heading into the worst. As long as I don't make any twists or turns and just go in a straight line, I won't be able to get lost. After what I've seen, the woods feel especially hostile now. I wonder what else could be lurking in the shadows or farther amongst the trees. Countless possibilities that I've never considered are suddenly possible. Plausible. But for once, I don't hesitate. I just walk, my feet automatically stepping over roots and other forest debris. Underfoot, the snow is slushy and messy. My head feels the same. Is she heading back to the, chur the church? Or... Mm. I'm upset. Uh. Okay, gonna take another short break. <clears throat> and I'll be right back. Hopefully I remembered to turn the screen back this time.
Yeah, I'm a bit salty. <laughs> Giant monster BF, please say friendship. I don't know if that monster BF is powerful enough to save this one. Uh, Maddie has worked so fucking hard on the channel. Like, she did everything. And now that there's, like, undeniable proof, suddenly Tara doesn't need any more help anymore? Uh, that's just so fucked up. <clears throat> My heart hurts. Everything hurts. My nose burns from crying. The cold only exacerbating the effect. What am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to say? I just feel lost. I reflect on the show and on the years I've spent with Tara and wonder how it all came to this. Oh, fuck. God damn it. Again. Damn it, Sarian. I'm sorry, you guys deserve to yell at me. Um, maybe she's still in shock? I don't know if that's it. Maybe? Who knows? The show had been her idea, of course, but I was the one who encouraged her to go through with it. She'd always had a flair for the dramatic. I even said it. <laughs> I even said. Hopefully I remember, but no. I'm just drinking the but dumb bitch juice today. Uh, whether it was just the school play, her old blog, or even the over-the-top fanfic she used to write. And I'd always been there to support her, whatever it was. I'd go over her lines with her and help her rehearse or even edit her fix when she first had the idea for Terra Normal and combining her two biggest interests cryptids and herself, I was the only person who said she should go for it. I even came up with the name, which I'm still pretty proud of. At first, I thought it would be just another entry in a long list of harebrained ideas that Tara and I would, uh, Tara would start and quickly lose interest in. I gave it two, maybe three episodes tops before she got bored, but the perception was good and the views started coming in. So did the ad revenue and the sponsorships. What had started as a weekend hobby turned into a weekend responsibility, and then into a day job. My role went from holding a cheap camera and stitching together the footage to actually learning proper video editing and investing in a decent equipment. It seemed only natural that I'd be the one to handle all the invites, fan mail, inquiries, and more the professional side of things. I put my life on hold for this show. Quit college halfway through my film study degree. What? And moved out of my cheap student housing. I gave up my barista job and the store manager promotion I'd been hoping for. I dropped everything to... Uh, I dropped everything in order to help Tara make the best show possible. Jesus. I even hate Tara even more. What the fuck? Sure, it wasn't like I had it rough. Tara's always split the royalties with me and pays for the expenses herself. The two of us have done pretty well for ourselves. Better than we had any right to expect. But at the end of the day, it was still about Tara. Her name in the title. Her name in the contracts. Her name in the fan mail. Tara, Tara, Tara. And when it's all over, when the final episode someday goes up and she moves on, she'll be able to take that name with her anywhere. That success, that popularity. And all I'll have is a memory. The more I dwell on it, the more unfair Tara's behavior seems. I can feel anger overcoming my sadness. How could she say I'm only pretending to care? 
I gave up years of my life for her and dedicated them to making her look good. Without me, she'd never been able to balance running the business side of the show while actually making it. Hell, she's not even close to being tech-savvy enough to do what I do. Part of me wants to spin around right now and go back to the cabin and demand a, an apology. But I know how that would go. She'd just get defensive, and even if she, uh, she did say she's sorry, she wouldn't mean it. It wouldn't actually fix anything. We'd just be back to where we started when we first got to Eisenfeld. Awkward and tense. There isn't really a good solution I can think of. But I have to do or say something. I can't just leave things as they are. Her offer for an early trip home lingers in my mind. I'm sure she'd make good on that promise. It sounds pretty tempting, too. In less than three days, I could be comfortable, warm, and back in my own bed. I'd never have to think about Morgan, or Eisenfeld, or forest spirits, or weird churches, or floating lights again. I could just move on with my life the same way I'd been planning to once I get home anyway. As I think that, though, I know it's not really an option. I'd never be able to live with myself if I let it all go unresolved. Two piercing red eyes shine in my memory, and I know there's no way I'd be able to forget about them. Remembering the monster makes me stop in stock of my surroundings. I've been walking at a pretty good rate, unhindered by the weather and fueled by my bad mood. There's a small clearing just up ahead, and it looks like it might be a good spot to take a short break. It's not very big. I realize when I reach it, I could toss a stone from one side to the other. It doesn't feel as stifling as the rest of the forest, though. I clear my throat. It's the only noise I can hear. The sounds of the village don't travel this far. They're, they barely reach the cabin for the most part. Overhead, the sky's a crystal clear blue for the first time that I can remember. It's still freezing, but it isn't cloudy. Not even an airplane or vapor trail disturbed the tranquility. I rub my eyes and defog my glasses. I must look like a real mess out here. I do feel a little bit better, though. though. The fresh air alone has helped clear my head. <clears throat> Jeez. Okay. The snow underfoot is well trembled from my stomping around, and mud mixes with the slush to form a thin paste that sticks to my boots. I have no idea what's going on, but it doesn't seem good, because I'm behind. Well, uh, I'm sure you can grab contacts, you know? If there was somewhere to sit down, uh, this place would be perfect. I make do with leaning against a tree that's mostly dry. I'll need to remember how I got here. It would be nice to have a place of my own to retreat to when I need it. Away from the other two. Just as I'm enjoying the tranquility, there's a rustling sound overhead. And I look up just in time to get a face full of snow as it slides off a branch. Perfect timing. I cough and sputter, wiping away as much as, as I can. Though a lot of it still falls into my clothes, I flap my jacket like wings, trying to knock it out. Right then, from the corner of my eye, a quick motion catches my attention. It's gone too fast for me to notice more than a glimpse of fabric, and I turn around to see who it was. 
What? But there's nothing there, and there's no sign of having, and no sign of anything having been there. Heart pounding, I walk over in the direction it came from, looking for footprints or something. There's nothing. I rub my eyes. Maybe it was the snow, messing with my vision. Snap. The harsh, unmistakable sound of a branch breaking cracks behind me. I spin around, ex expecting to see Tara there with a dumb smile on her face for having spooked me. But again, there's nothing. I pull my coat tighter around myself and press my back against a tree. H hello Hello? Is someone there? My voice resounds through the clearing, but goes unanswered. Again, a flash of movement from the corner of my eye. This time, I'm sure I see it. A glimpse of purple darting behind a tree. I start toward it, hands re hand reaching, but without a clear plan in mind. Just like a dog chasing cars. I don't know what I'll actually do if I catch it. I walk into the middle of a clearing, turning a slow circle, hoping to spot whatever it was. C can you hear me? Hello? It already knows I'm here. There's no point in trying to hide. What? What? The snow crunches off to my left and I pivot, just in time to see a girl disappear yet uh, behind yet another tree. Hey! Wait! I may as well not be saying anything for all the effect it seems to have. I hurry to the tree where I saw her, but she's gone. I'm just running in circles, chasing after who knows what. My heart beats like a kick drum. A million possibilities race through my head. It's more fantastic than the last. Yes, anime girl. Maybe she's from the village. Maybe I imagined her. Maybe she's another forest spirit. Maybe she's the same forest spirit we saw before in a different form. <laughs> any of them, any of them could be true. I've seen now that nothing is impossible. I look all around, searching for a clue and finding none. This is a bad idea. I know. Every single fairy tale I've ever read warns that this is a bad idea. Chasing after mysterious girls in the woods never ends well. She could be luring me to her secret lair, or it could be a disguise for some kind of terrible monster. Maybe it's a forest spirit come to her exact revenge for trespassing in its territory. I should turn and run, and race back to the cabin. If I told Tara and Morgan, I'm sure this is the kind of thing that would override Tara's annoyance. At least for now. <laughs> it could be our chance to pass, patch things up, pursuing some new uh, mystery. Or, I could not tell Tara, and I could solve the mystery myself, whatever it is. For the first time, something happened to me that doesn't involve Tara. I could keep it that way. My hand is trembling, but I reach out in the direction I last saw the girl, more as a sign of openness than anything else. Uh, are you still there? Silence. Um, if you can hear me, can you let me know? No response. My fingers close over empty air. This is stupid. I feel like an idiot talking to no one. If she wanted to be caught, she would have let me, I'm sure. But then if she didn't, then what was the point of even showing herself? I'll come back tomorrow, okay? If you'll be here again, it feels desperate. It is desperate. But I can't let this chance go. Not when this could be all I have. A light breeze blows through as if to answer. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. I stand there, hoping for another sign. As I give up and turn back toward the path home, I see it. For just a split second, a bright pink light, crystal clear in the Culver sunset, flashes just once. It's the same one as we chased through the forest several days ago. My breath catches in my throat. My muscles tighten, poised to follow. But my common sense overrides. As much as I want to, I, I can't just 
go running off into the forest on my own, I'd probably never find my way back. I swallow. If it can understand me like it seems to, then I'll see you tomorrow, once I've had more time to prepare. I face the direction the light came from, even though it's gone now. I'll be back tomorrow. I promise. Morgan and Tara never noticed me come home. They might not have even noticed that I left. I don't make any efforts to talk with them. I'm still too angry with Tara. Instead, I spend the rest of my day in the uh, of my day in my room, watching films or reading. All of the research that I was eagerly eagerly working on is put now put aside, stuffed into a folder that's out of my sight on my hard drive. I have my own project now, my own lead to explore. The thought of that light and the mysterious girl in the woods stays on my mind through it all. Even late into the night, I can hear Morgan still over in Tara's room with her. At some point, the sounds go from conversation to something else. Um, um, <laughs> I turn up the volume on my computer. Jesus Christ. This is so fucked. What? I'm over it. <laughs> I'm over it. <sighs> they can do whatever they want. It's well past midnight when my eyes finally get heavy enough to sleep. The next day, I head straight to the clearing without telling anyone. Nearly 24 hours to the minute since I left it. From the thick clouds overhead, I can tell it's going to be a short trip. Still, I have to go. At least to see. My heart thumps with anticipation, and more than a little nervousness. It's an odd mix. I force myself to keep a calm demeanor, and not get too worked up. It's difficult. I'm hopeful, but I don't know what for. I don't have a camera or even my cell phone. There's no way I could prove anything that happens, and it's not like there's anyone who could vouch for me. Say that I saw what I saw. For now, it's important that I keep it that way. This encounter, wh whatever it may be, will be mine and mine alone. Arriving at the clearing, I brace myself for what I might find. Nothing's changed. I met with silence. There's a faint sound of trees rustling in the wind and nothing more. Hello? Are you out there? I give it a moment, waiting and hoping for a response that never comes. Maybe it really was my eyes playing tricks on me. The light could have been a reflection of the sun, and the girl could have been... The girl could have been... There isn't a doubt left in my mind that the girl was there. There's no way I didn't see someone. Someone. Frustrated, I kick at some of the mush on the ground. It splashes up and splatters my legs. Are you there? I I'm waiting. Please. I feel like a fool. I'm pleading with someone that may or not may not exist to manifest. If someone had told me a week ago that I'd been I'd be here doing this today, I'd laugh at them. Everything about the situation it is unlike me. My irritation builds up with myself, with Tara, with this stupid ghost light, with everything. Whatever was there is gone now, and Really, what kind of an idiot convinces herself to come back for an imaginary date with a weird breeze? I clench my fists, looking without seeing. Slowly, I turn circles, hoping for something. Anything. I try apes back and forth at an increasingly desperate pace, not really sure what kind of clue I'm searching for, but 
just knowing that I can't sit still. Okay, hold on. <laughs> hold on. Trapes. 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 I've been saying it wrong this whole time. I traves back and forth at an increasingly desperate pace. Not really sure what kind of clue I'm look I'm searching for, but just knowing that I can't sit still. If I sit still, then I'm giving up. And if I give up, then I really don't have anything left for me out there. Uh, Morgan should know better too. I don't like her. Yeah, I... I would say at least go somewhere else. Go to Morgan's house or her shop. Just leave. That's really fucked up. Like, I... That is like courtesy 101. Come on. For the second day in the row, I feel the sting of tears in my eyes and I pinch my eyes shut to stop them. Not here. Not today. I hold my hand there and suck in a deep breath. The cold air stings my throat. I study my breathing, fighting back the urge to cry. After a moment, once the urge has passed, I lure my hand and open my eyes. And she's there. So silently and so suddenly that it's like she was never not there. A anime girl? Oh. The mysterious girl stands before me, barefoot in the snow, but seemingly unfazed. She regards me with a curious look, her eyes wide, like I'm one who's out of place. Now that she's here, right in front of me, I realize I don't know what to say. Uh, hello? Is all I could muster. My voice comes out weaker than I expected. Princess Bubblegum has arrived. It is clearly Luca. Uh, her eyes go wide at my word. Her lips move, but no sound comes out. She mouths something else again, still without a voice. I, I can't hear you. A frown. She's like crying? She turns away. Have I disappointed her? Is she going to disappear again? Please don't go. I don't know why I want her to stay. Something is clearly different, unnatural. This isn't a normal girl. But that's exciting in and of itself. Ken, how are you doing today? Uh, what's up? I can't sleep, so I'm using your soothing voice to help. Oh, okay. Ah. So glad you could stop by. It's been a while. The girl turns back around to face me again. She looks just as confused as I feel. Oh, yeah, this is Heart in the Woods. <laughs> Probably saw that in the title, but yeah, it's a, a Yuri visual novel. Uh, there's a nervous sort of energy to her. Beneath the gown she's wearing, far too thin for the weather. The girl's legs are tense and ready to bolt. I take a step towards her, holding out my hand the same way I'd approach a kitten or lost puppy. My name's Madison. Can... can you understand me? She still looks a bit nervous, but nods. So we speak the same language. That's good. Is she from Eisenfeld? I can't imagine she's from anywhere else. There's nothing else around. You were talking, right? Just a bit ago, but I couldn't hear you. Another nod. That means that, for whatever reason, her words can't reach me. Maybe she's naturally mute, or maybe her voice was magically stolen. Every idea that comes to mind is more ridiculous than the last, but I consider them all equally. To my surprise, I'm able to remain calm and... By my standards, pretty level-headed. It seems like the girl is more afraid of me than vice versa. I drop my hand down, offering a handshake. She stares at it for a moment, maybe expecting it to turn into a snake or for me to shoot magic bolts from my fingers. 
When neither of those happen, she gingerly slowly reaches for my hand. It passes right through me. Her fingers glide through the palm of my hand like a breeze disappearing into the air. With a sad smile, she looks down, seemingly expecting this result. Oh, she's a ghost. Horrific realization slowly dawns on me, with the same tinge of certainty that guided me out here. This girl isn't really here in the same way that I am. Ah, oh, that hurts. That hurts. You're a ghost. A slow, sad nod. She looks apologetic about it, for inconveniencing me, inconveniencing me with her lack of corporeal form. I'm sorry. The words feel weak and inadequate, and nearly like a non sequitur. But really, what do you say to a ghost? She shakes her head vigorously, hair flying about, trying to rid herself of some bad thought. She gives me a big smile and stretches her arms wide, turning about uh, to gesture to the trees around us. What is it? I, I don't understand. The girl bites her lip, wondering how to better convey her message. Then, with a decisive nod, she points at me, and then points at the ground between us. Pausing a moment, she holds that pose. Then she points at the trees, in particular the path I'd come from, and shakes her head. A flash of fear knifes, knifes its way under my skin. Is she threatening me? She def definitely doesn't look like it. She's probably saying don't go in the forest. Um, something about where I came from? She nods, and then repeated, uh, repeats the pointing. First at me, then at the ground. M me Right here? Another nod. You're asking if I'll stay here? She nods and claps, hopping up. She's so cute! Except she doesn't come down. <laughs> she hovers there, as if suspended by invisible strings, then slowly lowers herself back to the ground. Right and keel. Holy shit. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's what she was going for, but I smile. Are you showing off? She laughs and nuts, glad to be understood. I can save her a bit, sure. If you want me to, I mean. The girl practically zooms the short distance between us, moving with what might be supernatural speed. She stands so close that her gown phases through me, uncomfortable in its lack of sensation. Oh shit, no clip GF. <laughs> Tara, I don't know her. Y'all hear something? And she nods again, this time solemn and hopeful. I can't fight the feeling that she could easily be setting some kind of trap or leading me astray, but I still don't get that impression from her, so I agree. Okay, I'd be happy to. But I can't stay for too long or Tara will st start to wonder where I am. Will she though? Tara again. For the first time since we arrived, I was able to fully push her from my thoughts. I was so overwhelmed by meeting this girl that Tara didn't even register in my consciousness. But now, there she is again. She's more haunting than the ghost. The ghost in question mouths Tara's name. One of the few words I can actually lip read. Um, the person I came here with, she's, um, back in the village. The girl's eyes go wide and she points in the direction of the forest, then makes a dragging motion back to where we are. This one's easy to understand. No, she's not coming here, she has no idea. For the first time I'm glad the girl can't speak because it means she can't ask me to elaborate. I don't want to think about Tara right now. Um, anyway, were you here yesterday too, watching me? A nod, wholly unapologetic. I thought so. I also thought I might be crazy, though. At this point, I wouldn't be surprised by either one. She looks surprised. I wonder if she knows about the other supernatural occurrences in the forest. Maybe they're 
connection somehow. Um, the, the other day, my friend and I were out in the forest. Nod. And suddenly, there was this huge snowstorm out of nowhere, and we saw this, this giant thing. I stretched my hands to indicate just how enormous it was, but it, the enormity and terror of it are impossible to convey. I, I, I don't even know how to describe it. It was a monster of some kind, like a huge tree had come alive and was walking in the snow. Do you know what I'm talking about? Not only does the girl nod, but she laughs, finding something funny about my story. I'm not sure if I should be worried or not. So, you've seen it. Is it, like, evil? A firm shake of her head. That's good. It was honestly the scariest thing I've ever seen in my life. After that, we taper off into silence. Well, I do. I don't have a reason to believe her, but so far she doesn't seem threatening at all. I have a hard time holding up my end of a conversation under normal circumstances. This just makes it even harder. The two of us just stand there, looking at each other. Now that she's not moving around so much, I'm able to get a better look at her. She seems to be around my age, if not a bit younger. Her hair is long and... Excuse me. Ugh. Slightly out of Ruby, reaching well down her back. She reminds me a bit of Rapunzel, all alone in the forest. A cute bow midway down helps keep her hair in place. Her white eyes are curious, but slightly sad. She smiles so easily that I wonder if I'm just imagining the sorrow. As green as emeralds, her eyes kind of remind me of Morgan's. I was so taken aback by her sudden appearance and, well, ghostliness that I did at first didn't realize. She's beautiful. Her choice of attire makes a lot more sense now that I know she can't feel the cold. The gown she's wearing has a few dangling threads and scuffed spots, which I assume she hasn't changed since she, uh, died. I shudder, trying not to think of my own mortality. What was it like? Why is she here? Instead of whatever usually happens when you die, does she know that she's missing? An afterlife or lack thereof? I have a million questions about her life and about life itself. There's so much I want to ask, but it's impossible. Plus, we've only known each other a few minutes. It feels like that would be rude to ask her right away. A thick snowflake lands on my cheek, startling me. I had pretty much forgotten about the weather. Overhead, the clouds are getting worse, and the snow is starting to fall more heavily. As much as I want to spend more time with her, I really don't want to get caught out in a blizzard a second time. I... I need to go back now, but will you be here again? I'd like to see you again, if you'd like that too. She nods emphatically with a grin to match. I can't help but smile in return. It's nice to know that someone is looking forward to seeing me. Uh, okay, I'll come back as soon as I can, I promise. Although, I'm not sure when the weather will let me do that. On the next sunny day, I'll be here, okay? She nods. Okay, I'll see you soon then, I hope. The girl waves goodbye as I turn to leave, remaining in the center of the clearing. As I get my last look at her, I know that I'm not imagining the sadness in her eyes now. Oh, she's so alone. I glance behind several times on the walk back, each time expecting, to her, expecting her to have disappeared once more. But she stays there, waving, until the trees obscure her from sight. A splash of purple and fabric, uh, splash of purple fabric against the brown and white of the forest. A little spark of light to look forward to. Okay, gonna take another quick break, and this time I'm not gonna change my screen because screw that. <laughs> Keep forgetting to. Uh, change it back, so might as well not use it. I'm a dingus.
Uh, you're going, Ember? Okay, good night. Okay. I, I think I have, like... I think I can go for, like, half an hour and then I'll start doing homework. <laughs> uh, Maddie and Tara? And friends? I... They never said they were together explicitly, but... You never know, maybe they're just, you know, gals being pals. <laughs> they did say they were best friends, so, I don't know. Plus, it seemed like a normal occurrence that Tara was flirting with other girls while they are doing the videos, so I think they weren't together while well, Terra Normal was going on. <clears throat> With almost every step I take, I cast a glance behind me. I keep expecting to hear the crunch of snow or spot a flash of red hair as Tara follows me, but there's nothing. What? Tara? What? <laughs> I'm alone. I hurry through the woods practically on autopilot. Less than a week ago, I've never set foot in the forest on my own. But now that I already have the, uh, I already have the path to the clearing memorized, it gives me extra time to worry. What am I even doing? Everything about this situation is extremely not me. Heading off on my own to a dark forest without telling anyone? To go meet up with the ghosts? Even thinking the word ghost still makes my heart lurch. I've seen her with my own eyes, and yet I still have trouble believing it. And I'm just trusting that she's not going to lead me to her lair and suck out my soul or something like that. <sighs> she's going to suck out something else. I feel like Gretel, and I'm not even cautious enough to leave a breadcrumb trail. But still, I keep walking. There's something exciting in being on my own. I'm doing something without Tara. I can't remember the last time I had a secret from her. At least not a big one. Not telling her about the ghost girl feels a little bit like rebellion. I feel like I deserve something exciting that's all my own. You are your own, own, own person, Maddie. Don't worry about it. She and Morgan can do... Go do whatever. I doubt Tara will even notice that I'm not around. And even if she does, it's something that she needs to get used to. I've tried to show her how to cut a video or frame a shot lots of times. It's her own fault if she still doesn't get it. Just like it's her own fault that she's missing out now. As I approach the clearing, I slow down a little. My usual trepidation overtakes me once again as I contemplate just how reckless this is. Oh, we're going back again. Okay. There's no absolute. Uh, there's absolutely no guarantee that the girl isn't dangerous, that I'll walk out of these woods alive. Normally, I'd chastise Tara for following her gut instinct, which dictates probably 70% of her decisions. Yet, that's all I have to go off of right now. The feeling that I'm safe with the ghost girl, that she won't harm me. I cross the threshold of trees and into the clearing. Just like the other times, it's serenely quiet. That is a beautiful shot. Even my past footsteps are gone, erased by the wind or snowfall. I'm, I'm here. Somehow, I feel like she already knows. The forest swallows my words, returning to frozen, pristine silence. Soundlessly, she steps out from behind a tree. What are you, what are you doing back there? <laughs> That's cute. A uh, small smile sits on her face, though her eyes are slightly downcast. She waves, meeting her, my eyes for just a moment before glancing away. Hi there. My words hang in the still air. Oh, uh, were you waiting on? Uh, were you waiting for me? <laughs> we lock eyes again, and she nods, quickly, earnestly. I hope it wasn't for too long. 
She shakes her head and then she laughs. I'm not sure what the joke is though. I mean, it's probably like a couple seconds to her. What? <laughs> What's so funny? Once she catches her breath, she bites her lip as she ponders. After a moment, she shrugs, looking apologetic. I guess explaining a joke through gestures would be difficult. She sidles up next to me and I fight the urge to step back. Though I've decided to trust her, my instincts still belie my nerves. But what she, what she seems to be most interested in the, is in the bag slung over my shoulder. She simulates opening the bag so that she can see into it. Nosy, huh? Immediately, she backsteps, waving her hand in a frantic, apologetic motion. <laughs> Sorry, I was just kidding. You can look. She regards me like a timid deer as I hold the bag open for her to see. Inside are a couple books that I picked up in the village this morning. <laughs> I hold up the first one, small and square and baby blue. I got a really strange look from the person who runs the bookstore because of this one. It's a book of baby names. Her eyes go wide, and she grasps at her belly, then points at me. It takes me a second to understand what she means, and for some reason I feel my face flush. Uh, no, Maddie's not pregnant. No, I'm not pregnant, but... I, I thought maybe you could use it to show me your name. If it's a name, that would be... <laughs> Before I can finish my sentence, she zoomed back over to me, all sense of personal space once again discarded. She claps her hand, a fiery look in her eyes, and hops up and down. Frankly, it's adorable. <laughs> Guess you're a fan. Okay, cool. She eyes the book hungrily. She must be really excited to share her name with me. It's a little exciting for me, too. It's nice to see one. Someone so happy about being with me. I fight to keep an overzealous grin off my face. Okay, let's see. I look around. Aside from trees and snow, there isn't much. I wonder if there's something about this place in particular that the girl likes. Is there somewhere nearby that we could sit down? It feels a little weird to just keep standing. Finger on her chin, she ponders. Then she turns and points towards the woods even further in. I can tell from the look in her eyes that she's uncertain. I swallow a lump in my throat. I've come this far after all. Uh, sure, that's fine. Lead the way. She does so, but never gets too far from my side. Every few steps she glances over at me, as if making sure I'm still here. That feels a little backwards to me, but in a nice way. I don't really feel compelled to break the silence either. Of course, part of that is because any conversation would be one-sided. But also, she, lo she looks content, like she's happy to be here. I am too. The silence doesn't feel vast and overwhelming, like it has with Tara. It feels warm. Before too long, I realize what our destination is. This is nearly the same path that Morgan took us down just a couple desks ago. I recognize some of the more grotesquely warped trees. Okay, we're going to the church? We're going to that church. Eyes wide, she nods, probably surprised that I know of it. Uh, one of the villagers showed it to us a few days ago, me and my friend. It feels weird to just call Tara my friend. Usually, if I'm talking to someone about Tara, they've met her. The girl just nods yet again. As we reach the edge of the trees and the church itself comes into sight, I look around for traces of the monster we saw days before. There are none to be seen, though. No snapped or toppled trees. No footsteps as deep as I am tall. Much like the girl beside me, there's no trace of its, its existence. I look over to the door of the church where she's patiently waiting for me. Once again, I fight back all my fears and hesitations and head for the door too. It's too late to turn back now. The door is sli still slightly ajar from our visits days ago. A thin trail of snow powders 
the entryway, but otherwise the church is dry. It's still unnaturally warm. I wonder if it has to do with the girl, too. From the way she walks, I can tell she's familiar with the place. She heads to the front, stopping just shy of the altar, where she turns around to face me. Being back here is a little unnerving, and I slowly approach her. Though she hasn't given me any reason to be suspicious, the image of those monstrous eyes is ingrained in my memory. <clears throat> but this time there's no howling wind or earth-shaking footsteps, just the one girl waiting patiently. I give her a smile as I sit down on one of the pews near the front. It's home from stone, smooth and rigid. She takes a seat right beside me. Normally, being this close to strangers makes me uncomfortable, but with her, I don't really mind. Part of it, of course, is the fact that I can't feel her at all. The other part is that it feels kind of pleasant to sit together like this. I hastily push that thought out of my mind. She's a ghost. She is literally transparent and insubstantial. <laughs> I rummage through the bag and grab the book of baby names. <clears throat> Okay, so first, she bounces up and down with anticipation as I tear off the plastic cling wrap and stuff in the tote bag. Is the first letter early in the alphabet? <coughs> oh, excuse me. She nods and holds up one finger. I? L? Two shakes of her head. She touches her index fingers together and then uses her middle finger to cross between them. A. Oh, an A. Enthusiastic nodding. I flip to the first couple of the pages in the book, right in the middle of the ice. The first name I spot is Amber. Impatiently, she leans over me and motions to go further back towards the start. I turn the pages slowly, giving her time to scan. On the very first page, she holds out a hand to stop and points. She's practically hanging over my shoulder to show me. Ooh. <laughs> Abigail. Your name is Abigail. She gives me the biggest, most radiant grin I've ever seen as she nods. Her joy is infectious, and I can't help but smile, too. Abigail. I repeat it, and she looks even more joyful. A beam of light breaks through the glass window, illuminating dust motes that make it look, like, uh, look as if she's sparkling. We lock eyes, and I feel my breath catch in my throat. The look in her eyes, pure, unadulterated happiness, is something I've never seen before. They shine with tears, the good kind. The kind that bring out the color of her eyes, the radiant kind. I didn't know if I could make someone happy like this. I quickly look away, back to the now irrelevant book in my lap. <laughs> anyway, Abigail, um, I had a qu couple questions. Is that okay? Abigail nods. So, maybe this is rude to ask, but are you a ghost, or are you something else? Abigail closes her eyes, and with a sad smile, nods. I'm sorry. I'm not sure what the appropriate response is to something like that. Then, are you from Eisenfeld? Nod. Do you know a girl from there called Morgan? She shakes her head. That makes sense. I'm sure Morgan would have mentioned her before, so... So... Have you been, like... Have you been... Have you, like, been a ghost for a long time, then? I cringe a little as I ask. It seems gosh, although I'm not entirely sure what proper etiquette is for this kind of conversation. I'm not sure she would know, I mean... I'm sure time is, like, nothing to her. In answer to my question, she nods again. Do you know how long? A shrug. She holds up two fingers, then two fists. Two... hundred? Another shrug, and a nod. Two hundred years. I murmur to myself in slight disbelief. It could be more. I doubt she's been keeping track of it every day. The world out there... The world I came from, 
it may as well be another planet for her. I'm sorry. It's incomprehensible to me. I can't fathom that much time passing unable to talk to anyone. How lonely that must be. She's closed her eyes yet again, though I've been interpreting her silence as serene. I wonder if that's how she feels. These yes or no questions are practically the extent of what I can ask her. There's still such a gulf between who she is and what I've know of what I know of her. Centuries worth of solitude. In all that time, have you ever spent time like this with someone else? Without opening her eyes or looking at me, she shakes her head again. I'm the only one? Not. I fall silent too, my head reeling. There are so many things that I want to ask and want to know. How did she die? Why did her spirit stick around? Does she know about the thing we saw in the snow? Why am I the first person she's shown herself to? But there's no way she could answer. And even if she could, I wonder what if she'd want to. Is it impolite to remind a ghost that they're dead? It's morbidly funny to me that these are questions I have to ask myself. Tara would love this. Tara would... Screw Tara. <laughs> I push that thought out of my head too. Tara's not here right now. It's just me and Abigail. Uh, would you like me to read that other book? Her grin returns, the moment of melancholy it is spelled. Seems like I made the right call in changing the subject. You know, it's safe. I show her the cover before I crack it open, enjoying that new book smell. Uh, this is a book I read a lot when I was younger. It's about a girl who wants to be a hero, she, uh, so she goes on a quest with her best friend to prove herself. Hmm. It's a little childish, I guess, but maybe you'll like it. Abigail claps her hands and nods. She's so sweet. I have a feeling I could read the dictionary to her and she'd be satisfied. But I don't mention that. <laughs> okay. I smooth the crease and open to the first page. Once upon a time. It's a story that I could probably recite by heart. My mom used to read it to me when I was a little girl, and it was one of the books that I used to learn to, I used to learn to read. I was both surprised and excited to see that there was a copy in Eisenfeld's bookstore. I settled into an easy, easy cadence of reading. Though I'm not used to reading out loud, it starts to feel pretty natural after only a couple pages. Like my mom used to do, I give all the characters different voices. I don't have quite the range that mom does, but Abigail seems to enjoy it all the same. She smiles and laughs in all the right places. It makes my heart warm to see how much she's enjoying it. Her eyes are closed yet again, but she looks quite content. As we finish chapter 2, Abigail skits a little bit closer and rests her head near my shoulder. Is that even possible? <laughs> I pause mid-sentence, surprised, but resume just a second later. It's so cute! Though I can't feel her there, the sentiment is clear. I keep reading. Sometimes when I glance down, I can see her that her eyes are open, reading along. Her lips mouth the same words I am. One time she catches me looking and blushes, but I just smile and continue going. After we finish chapter 4, I finally pause. My mouth is dry and my jaw is starting to hurt a little bit. Hmm, interesting. <laughs> I feel... I'm feeling that a little bit right now. I must have been reading aloud for close to an hour. Uh, more like 2 hours and 30 minutes. <laughs> Even though I stop, Abigail doesn't sit up or open her eyes. Her hand rests on my arm, and I set the book aside. Do ghosts need to sleep? That's another question I can ask, but maybe at a different time. Right now, I'm happy to let her pretend. Quietly, I hum a song. It's something from the radio, a title I can't remember, but that's always stuck in my head. I'm extremely off-key, I'm sure, but I don't care. It just feels... Right. When I stop, she finally opens her eyes and sits back up. 
As we gaze at each other, she mouths two words that I don't have to be good at reading lips to decipher. Thank you. No problem. I hope you like the story. First she claps, and then she places one hand over her heart. I laugh, fluttered, but also a little embarrassed. I think that's all I can do today, but we should read more sometime. Uh, if you want to, I mean. I already know the answer, but she gives me an emphatic nod all the same. Okay. It's a promise. She touches her heart again, and I smile. I should probably head back to the cabin soon. People will start to get suspicious if I'm gone for too long. Abigail cocks her head like an owl, curious. I, uh, I haven't told my friends about you yet. It's sort of like our secret, I guess. And I want to keep it that way for a little while longer. She smiles in agreement. Okay, I think I think I'll probably leave it for there. Let's go ahead and save. Ah, I am so happy for Maddie. We got a new friend, a, a ghost, a ghost GF, and she is so sweet. It's not possible, but who cares? Yes, uh, she's doing it on purpose. Ah, uh, yes. Oh. Uh, before I accidentally click anything else, let me put on some lovely copyright-free music. My favorite kind. All right, uh, well, <laughs> I'm really enjoying this so far. I'm, I feel so bad for Maddie. Like, she doesn't deserve this. Tara's just, uh, mm, Tara's just a lot of things, okay? <laughs> That's so fucked up. And then she just, like, oh. I don't know what her, her problem actually is. Maybe that's just her true colors. Who knows? But yeah, I will play this very soon because I am really enjoying it and I want to finish it uh, all the way. Uh, though I will be playing other things just for a variety. Um, uh, tomorrow or... Let me see my calendar. Tomorrow is looking pretty busy. But either tomorrow or Wednesday, I can stream uh, more Mother 3. Because I also want to finish that. It is uh, getting pretty good. I don't want to just leave it there. Yes, we are getting more Mother 3. <laughs> Uh, tennis says, I, I haven't looked at it yet, but mm, I'll check it out. <clears throat> Let me see. Uh, you follow the life of an 18-year-old boy who aspires to become a professional tennis player at the end of his senior year in high school. The game has three dateable characters, all of them being part of the protagonist's inner circle of friends. Hmm... Hmm. Don't know how long it is, but you know what? If I get the chance, I'll play it. Well, when I get the chance after, like, around this week, 
I'm not saying that I'll play it, I don't know, a year after, a year in advance, or a year later. I'll play it soon, that's what I mean. Words. Um... It looks cute. It's pretty long. Oh shit. Uh, do you know how long exactly? So we'll be reading it out loud. <clears throat> what do you guys think of Heart of the Woods so far? I'm really loving it. <laughs> Let me see. Um. Oh gosh, I have like three classes tomorrow. And... No lab, fortunately. Most people do it at like an hour session? That's perfect, man. <laughs> yeah, an hour? Come on, like... This one episode of Heart of the Woods itself is like... Two hours... Two and a half hours. And gosh, how many chapters are there? Uh, I like it. I want to know what happens next with Tara and Morgan, as awful as they're being. I mean, yeah, hopefully they... I hope they end up together. I guess, do their own thing. I think Morgan's... Okay. I feel like she should... Mm. She hasn't... She hasn't particularly done anything wrong. In that kind of situation, you kind of... Wouldn't really think about Maddie. Tara, on the other hand. Shit's fucked. God, there are six chapters. <laughs> okay, well, this is gonna be a pretty long playthrough, I'm pretty sure. Uh, hmm. That was just chapter two. <laughs> Fuck, okay. I realized I didn't even change my card. I am so bad at that. Six chapters. How long is this gonna take? Well, I mean, hey, it gives me something to stream, at least. I'm not complaining. I'm sure it'll be fine to also, like, play things in between. <clears throat> Yeah, come on, Maddie. You've only read for an hour, and then your your jaw is sore and your mouth is dry. Well, you didn't have any water. <laughs> Can't really blame you there. Get good, Maddie. started on my homework but yeah thank you guys for tuning in 
thanks for watching. And I'm so glad you guys are here to support me. And yeah, I will play more of this soon. Uh, but next will be Mother 3 for the next stream. So, let me see. Uh, anything else? Yeah, I hope you guys have a good rest of your day or rest of your evening. And yeah, take care of yourselves and I will see you next time. Bye.